Hello everyone and welcome to the Wise Decision Maker Show where we help you make the wisest and most profitable decisions. And today we'll talk about making the wisest decisions about confirming our biases or hopefully disconfirming our biases with a concept called the confirmation bias, which is a dangerous judgment error that can seriously impede our business profits and cause a lot of business losses. Now, what's that about, confirmation bias? Well, leaders of all sorts, everyone, but in this case, we're really focusing on leaders, have a lot of trouble with accepting uncomfortable truths. Why is that? Well, leaders see themselves as good people, strong people, great leaders. They have a self-identity that they are good, that they perform well, therefore, everything must be going well. Because they are good leaders, therefore, everything must be going well in their business. I've, all of their decisions must be going well, and any information that indicates things aren't going well is probably wrong. <laughs> that is why leaders, and everyone else, but especially leaders, tend to be a little bit, have a have full head, be a little bit too full of themselves. It's a tendency, this is a reason why they became leaders. They tend to stand out, they tend to see them, be proud of themselves, they tend to see themselves as above the rest. Again, this is why they became leaders. So it's especially a problem for leaders of rejecting signs of making mistakes and trying to convey an appearance of success to themselves, to try to convince themselves that they're great leaders, to give that confidence and to convey that to others. As a result, leaders are especially prone to the confirmation bias. The confirmation bias is one of many cognitive biases. These are mental blind spots causing poor strategic decision-making in all sorts of areas, business areas, life areas, all sorts of topics, and causes leaders to go with their gut, to follow their heart and trust their intuitions, instead of looking at best practices of how to make the right decisions most effectively, not by going with your gut. So it's a confirmation bias. It's simply looking for information that confirms the beliefs that you already had. Say you already had some pre-existing beliefs and the confirmation bias is um, describes the mental tendency to look for information that confirms those beliefs and ignore, put aside any information that disconfirms those beliefs. So you're going to tend to ignore information that contradicts those beliefs. That, of course, will result quite often in poor business decisions and can harm your business reputation, your own reputation, and not accept the what is actually going on. So you're going to be ignoring signs of failure. You're really going to be believing that you're more successful than you are. And so that's what happens. Leaders don't acknowledge the reality of what happens. And that causes losses, reduction of profits. It happens in businesses of all sizes, from the largest ones to the smallest. There was an interesting study done of over 1,000 board members of 237 organizations that fired their CEOs. And what they found for, when they looked at why they were, the CEOs were fired, over a fifth of the leaders so 23% were fired for denying negative reality about the company. Now, not for performance, not for lacking vision or something like that, but for denying negative reality about the company. It's a major cause of leaders getting fired. And it happens across all levels of businesses. So you need to avoid this tendency to choose selective information. Think about how leaders deal with a business case. Well, what they do is they look for information that justifies the business case. They look at a business case they, and they say, okay, how do I prove this business case? That's what happens. Unfortunately, they don't tend to try to disconfirm their beliefs, try to disprove their business case, try to look for examples when there are types of initiatives that they try to, that they're trying to put into action fail. This lack of objectivity is something that unfortunately results in a lot of plans being overhyped, way too hyped up. And that is a broader tendency. It's a problem because challenging leaders is difficult and challenging ideas that are popular in your organization is difficult. 
So you'll have insiders, team members failing to speak out when the team leader is excited about something because companies don't really reward this. Leaders tend to not reward this. Even if they say, the door is open, you can always disagree with me. By their actions, they show that, hey, if you disagree with me, then you're not going to get promoted. It'll be a career-limiting move, a CLM. Not something that most people want in an organization, so they avoid CLMs, and that is a problem for leaders who want to actually have healthy disagreement. You want to reward people who disagree with you. You want to praise them, uplift them, and put them in higher positions. Otherwise, it takes a lot of courage to challenge popular ideas. Now, why did confirmation bias come about? It seems like it's obviously problematic in today's environment, right? Well, it wasn't problematic way back when we evolved our instincts and intuitions. It's intuition. It's an instinct. It's a gut reaction. In the savanna environment, the ancient ancestral savanna, when we lived in groups of 50 people to 150 people, we had to be very tribal in order to survive. And it facilitated our survival to align our beliefs with those of our tribe. That's not great in today's multipolar global world where we really want to orient toward the truth rather than what our tribe thinks. But in that ancestral environment, that was a good thing. And so we still retain that instinct to align with our tribe, even though we're much, much less likely to die if we're kicked out of our tribe. In this ancestral environment, we would be kicked out of our tribe, would be, we'll die. That's not great. That's not the case in the modern environment. But our intuition is still to agree with the tribe. That's a really big problem in the modern world. So how do you fight this? How do you counter the confirmation bias? Well, you want to think about ways of disconfirming your beliefs. Try to prove yourself wrong to avoid bad decisions. And if you can fail to prove yourself wrong, if you try, really try, actually try hard to prove yourself wrong, and you can't, that makes it more likely that you're going to be right. But if you can, that's great because you can be more right in the first place. And the same thing for your team. So that's one is for you, one is for your team. Be a devil's advocate. Try to prove your team's ideas wrong and create a culture of celebrating devil's advocates. It's going to be really beneficial to counter the confirmation bias. It helps you address problems in the popular ideas that are out there. And of course, you'll have a much stronger business case both in terms of convincing people and actually making a profit when ideas are able to withstand questioning. Now, if your team's ideas can be proved wrong, you know what? You can choose a better project and you'll be much better off if you do so. You can maximize your bottom line as a result and that will also help uplift your career. So that's how you counter the confirmation bias which is a really dangerous tendency, especially for leaders in the modern world. And if you want to make sure that you run a profitable company, you'll take the steps that you need to address the confirmation bias. All right, everyone. I hope this episode of the Why Decision Maker Show has proven beneficial for you. Please share your thoughts about the episode. Email me with your thoughts at gleb, G-L-E-B, at disaster avoidance experts dot com and please subscribe to the show wherever you heard it or watched it we have a video cast we have a podcast there's much more information about the show in the show notes so check that out please share it with your friends with your neighbors with your co-workers anyone who you can reach in your social media or by email and i hope that i will see you on the next time in the wise decision maker show in the meantime, the wisest and most profitable decisions to you, my friends.